Academy students. Welcome to the second video in the series on the tissues unit. Today we are going to talk about epithelial tissue. As you can see, I am masked up and ready to go. So let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about the epithelium or epithelial tissue. Uh, remember that epithelial tissue is used to line surfaces and form protective barriers. And this uh, includes your skin, anything exposed to the outside, or anything that is open to a space inside your body. So lining the hollow organs, um, lining the body cavities, so the inside of your thoracic or chest cavity, the inside of your abdominal cavity, um, the lining of the bladder, the inside of your intestines, so on and so forth. All of those areas are going to be covered in epithelial tissue. All epithelia have a free apical surface and an attached basal surface. So for our purposes, this area is the apical surface. That is the area that is uh, exposed to the open area. Again, whether it's the environment or the inside of an organ. And then it attaches down here at the basal surface. And this is going to hold true for all epithelial tissue. Epithelia are named according to the shape of their cells and the thickness or arrangement of their layers. Here they all are. We have simple, which is a single row of cells. We have stratified, which is a multiple layer of cells, and pseudostratified, which is a single layer that appears to be more than one. So here the nuclei are not lined up, and it gives the illusion of two layers when in all actuality it's just one. And again, pseudo means false, so that is false stratified. It looks like stratified, but it's really not. And then you can go by cell shape. So a flat cell is referred to as squamous. The cubed shape cells are referred to as cuboidal. And the very tall column shaped cells are referred to as columnar. So here we go again, naming epithelia according to shape. Squamous are flat. They are wide paving, kind of paving stone looking cells. I always think, remember, squamous looks like they're squashed. Uh, cuboidal, these cells are roughly as tall as they are wide, and they're said to have a cube shape, which is where their name comes from. And the very tall columnar, they are column shaped. Uh, they are much taller than they are wide. And again, the arrangement, a single layer of cells is said to be simple. A multiple group of multiple layers of cells is stratified. And then again, appears to be multiple layers, but in all actuality is just one, is pseudo stratified. And remember, pseudo means false. The three different cell shapes times three different cell arrangements would equal nine possible combinations. Uh, but in, in reality, uh, there are two of those that are not used, and we'll talk about that a little later. Um, they're just not found in the body. And then there's an additional kind called transitional. And transitional is unique uh, in their We'll talk about it more, but basically they uh, are in areas of high stretch where the tissue can be stretched out. And depending on when you view that tissue, uh, it can change the shape of the cell. If the tissue stretched out, the cells get flatter. If the tissue is not under stretch, then they get shorter and fatter and it kind of changes uh, how they look. So that's why they're given that, that uh, classification as transitional. 
If different shapes are present in the layers of the cells, the epithelium is always named by the shape of cells in the apical or outermost layer. So when we, for example, when we look at your skin, the very most outer layers of your skin cells are squamous or flat. There are multiple layers of cells. And if you go all the way down through all the layers of your epidermis, which is the outer part portion of your skin, you go all the way down from the outside to the basement membrane, they get shorter and fatter. And they almost take on a cuboidal shape down at the bottom where they're actually going through cell division. But since they're flat out at the edge, the outer surface, then that layer would be referred to as uh, stratified squamous, okay? So let's talk about the different uh, kinds of epithelial tissue and where you will find them. So the very basic, the very simplest is simple squamous. This is a single layer of flat cells. We find them in the air sacs of the lungs, which are called the alveoli. We find them in the lining of blood vessels, which makes sense because blood vessels are thin and in areas where you're going to need gases and nutrients to diffuse. So you need a thin layer of epithelial tissue for that to happen. You also find them in the lining of the heart and your lymph nodes or lymph vessels. In all capillaries, which are the very tiny microscopic blood vessels where gas exchange takes place at the tissue level. And you will find them in the filtering part of the kidney. Simple cuboidal, one layer of cubed shaped cells. We find them lining the tubules of the kidney and also in a lot of other glands. Uh, so you, the adrenal gland, you know, the hypothalamus, so on and so forth, is where you will find areas of simple cuboidal epithelial tissue. Simple columnar epithelium forms a single layer of column-like cells, and the columnar are unique. Many times they can contain cilia, which hopefully we remember from biology class that cilia are classified as, if you can't see me, I'm doing air quotes, uh, tiny hair-like projections. Microvilli are tiny projections of the cytoplasm. And this picture shows microvilli right here. So if they're thicker, they're microvilli. If they're really, really thin and resemble hair, uh, that would be cilia. And a lot of times, the uh, simple columnar epithelium will contain mucus producing cells, which are called goblet cells. And those produce mucus and the mucus then will spread out on the surface and provide a physical barrier against infection, will keep the tissue from drying out and so on and so forth. Goblet cells are simple columnar cells that have differentiated to acquire the ability to secrete mucus which is what I just said. Then we move to pseudostratified columnar epithelium, one of my favorite epithelium to say, especially if the uh, epithelium contains cilia. So we say, we say that it is ciliated and it is very smooth and rolls right off the tongue as uh, pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. And, uh, you know, I, I've been saying it for years. That is absolutely the funnest epithelial tissue to say. Uh, please pause the video and give yourself an opportunity to try it. It's, it's really fun. Uh, I'll say it one more time. It is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Next is stratified squamous epithelium. This is going to be multiple levels of flattened cells. And as I was talking about earlier, when naming, if you'll notice, uh, out here, the cells are flat, but down here, they have more of a cube shape. And as they are pushed further and further out to the surface, they become flatter and flatter. So whatever their shape is at the apical surface, then that is what we name it. So since they're flat out there, this is referred to as stratified squamous or multiple layers of flattened cells. Um, 
The many layers are ideal for protection against strong friction forces. So this is your skin, uh, the very outer surface of your skin called your epidermis. Epi means upon, dermis means skin. So this is the layer that's upon your skin. Uh, this is what this is where you're going to find stratified squamous epithelial tissue. Stratified cuboidal, multiple layers of cube-shaped cells. This has an apical surface made up of two or more layers of cubed-shaped cells. Locations would include the sweat glands and part of the male urethra. Stratified columnar epithelium is very rare and for our purposes, hardly worth mentioning, which makes me wonder, uh, then why did we mention it? Epithelium continued. The cells of transitional epithelium change shape depending on the state of stretch of the tissue, as I was saying earlier. So when the tissue is relaxed, the cells would have more of a cuboidal shape. But when the cells are under tension and stretched out, they flatten out and they have more of a flattened or squamous shape. The apical dome cells of the top layer seen here in relaxation are an identifiable feature and signify an empty bladder. So your bladder is one of the classic places that we find epi transitional epithelium because your bladder has an incredible ability to stretch. When your bladder is empty, it is very small. Think of a balloon. When your bladder is full, uh, it expands much larger so that it can hold more urine. Um, and this is why it will be lined with transitional epithelium. Although epithelia are found throughout the body, certain ones are associated with specific body locations. So here's a little diagram showing you where you can find various uh, areas where these tissues can be found. Stratified squamous epithelium is a prominent feature of the outer layers of the skin. For example, you're going to find my favorite, the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium will line the trachea. Uh, you'll get simple columnar will be inside the digestive tract. Simple squamous will be inside the air sacs of the lungs, uh, so on and so forth. Here's some more examples. I was just saying simple squamous makes up epithelial membrane and lines blood vessels. Columnar is common in the digestive tract. Pseudostratified ciliated columnar is characteristic of the upper respiratory tract. Uh, it's made me happy. I got to say it again. Transitional is found in the bladder and cuboidal cells line ducts and sweat glands. All right, this should take us through all of the material on epithelial tissue. So we will end our lecture video right here. All right, that'll take care of all the information we need to cover on epithelial tissue. So this is going to conclude video lesson two in the series. Stay tuned for lesson three. Talk to you later.